Welcome to the Black Creator Series, brought to you by Candlewick Press in collaboration with Red Clay Educators, hosted by Dr. Sonia Cherry Paul, bringing dynamic books, authors, illustrators, and artists to your classroom and to the world. Look for episodes of the Black Creator Series on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Our guest creator this episode is Christine Platt, a literacy advocate and historian who believes in using the power of storytelling as a tool for social change. Frankie and Friends, Breaking News, her engaging new early chapter book series embraces communication and compassion and is a refreshing portrayal of black women in journalism. Here's your host, New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Sonia Cherry Paul, founder of Red Clay Educators and co-founder of the Institute for Racial Equity in Literacy. Christine, welcome to the Black Creator Series. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. We're so excited that you are here. Um, Christine, you have written for adults and for children. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering which challenges you the most? (laughs) You know what? Um, That's a tough question, I think, because it depends on what I'm writing for each audience, right? Um, You know, for I I started writing for adults. um, And I guess because I'm adult, it probably... (laughs) makes it a little easier. I think with young people, probably the biggest challenge is the age that I'm writing for, you know, uh, having to use a very limited vocabulary, having to use a very limited word count. Um, But at the same time, that's that's also kind of fun and and part of the process. You know what I mean? Like, um, for example, a tree, you know, for an adult, I may not have to go into such detail. We all know what a tree is, right? Before a young person, like understanding that some of these things that I'm, that I'm writing about or that I'm telling them about, it's the first time they're being introduced to it in literature. And so wanting to make sure that, you know, I do it justice, you know? Uh, and so that, that, that is kind of fun, challenging and fun. Yeah. And we both have young adult children, we do. And, um, <laughs> you know, when I read Frankie and Friends Breaking News, which we'll talk about soon, it took me right back to, you know, the days of of being the mom of a young daughter. And, you know, uh, I imagined reading it with her and how she would react. And, you know, I'm I'm thinking that perhaps when you were writing this, you drew upon you know, that experience with your daughter too, right? How you would phrase something, how you might explain something, what she, what might tickle her and make her laugh, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in every children's book that I've written, there are elements and memories of times with my daughter uh, Mm -hmm. woven into those stories, right? Um, And yeah, uh, to your point, it's so fun to sort of revisit those uh, moments through the eyes of our, of, of new readers, right? And just looking back and remembering when Nala was pretty much Frankie, you know, just always reporting on everything. I had to be mindful of what I said all the time, you know, um, but having those be now some of my fondest memories, you yeah. know, and so really like to invite and remind parents and educators and caregivers to remember that even in the thick of things, right, these these stories that they could laugh about when they're reading it in our books, like they're living some of these moments um, and they truly will become some of their, their fondest memories. I know you best from the Afro Minimalist's Guide to Living with Less. <laughs> Yes. And in this book, you help many of us, and by us, I mean Black people, yes. to examine our spaces, our relationships with things, our finances, mm-hmm. and our goals in order to let go, and by doing so, gain a more centered connection to our Blackness, to ourselves, um, you write that living with less is 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 not only liberating, less is liberation. Is. And, and that really helped me to reimagine my life 
in ways where I can have more time. I'm still working on it. I'm a work in progress, but we all uh, are. <laughs> yeah, to find some more time to dream, to rest, to create, mm. to live, to love. And, and I was wondering um, in what ways does this stance, right? This ideology show up in your writing for children. Yeah, you know, I, I'm so glad you asked that question um, because I think, you know, as a as a black writer, uh, we often feel a sense of responsibility, right? Like, man, I am one of the few that have made it, and now I have the opportunity to tell these. I'm about to tell every story. I'm about to. Uh, I'm about to do it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and very early on in my career, I wore myself out. I mean, I have written um, more than 30 books since 2015. Uh, And a large part of that collection are children's books, right? I had an opportunity to write a children's series, an early reader series that taught young people about African-American history and culture through the lens of joy. And I wore myself out (laughs) writing that series Um, and to my own detriment in a lot of ways, right? It wasn't, um, it wasn't a traditional publishing contract. I don't, I don't earn royalties on that series, but I didn't know, you know what I mean? All I saw was like, I get a chance to write for our babies. I get to, you know, honor Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop and I'm about to do these windows and mirrors. I mean, I went so hard. Yeah. And had I just paused, right? There are so many ways that that work and future work um, would have benefited not only me, but also readers, right? Less is also an invitation to pause, you know? I was doing too much. (laughs) And so the way that shows up in my work now is me being very selective about the projects that I take on, highly selective about the publishers that I work with. Um, All of my work is with my children's book um, are with Candlewick, right? Um, I'm not mentioning that other series by name intentionally, right? Um, you know, again, the lesson learned, I'm, I'm always going to be grateful for the opportunity that it that it gave me and for the readers that those books have blessed and educators and parents. I still love hearing from them. Um, but I had to really, again, pause and say, how can I do this work in a way that is also beneficial for me, that is going to be beneficial um, for parents and educators and children, right? Who, 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 who do I want to work with yeah. to do this? Um, and just love that I've found a home in Candlewick um, and they've been just wonderful and so supportive of my work. And so I think that's how it manifests, right? That less choosing to be intentional about everything that I do. I'm so excited to <laughs> talk about Frankie and Friends breaking news. Yes. Here's our protagonist, our our delightful young Frankie, who in a time where kids could be running off to all the things that they're scheduled to do, right? Mm-hmm. I kind of see your 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 work in 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 the Afro minimalist's guide to living with less showing up in here. She mm-hmm. is drawing upon her imagination, her friends, her imaginary friends that are very real to her and help her, you know, move through her world, right? Just just pausing for play. Yes. Right? I don't think we see that enough. Mm-hmm. Um but I just love frankly Frankie. She is smart. She's compassionate. She is inquisitive. Tell us more about this character. Does she emerge from someone in your life? And and also, are her characteristics ones that you believe lend themselves to great journalism? I do. First of all, I love that you see uh, Afro-minimalists woven into this story. (laughs) 
it is so important for um, young folks to also pause and play um, and have these moments with their toys. And I, and I do think children do that, right? Um, I just think it's rarely talked about and rarely shown. And Frankie uh, really is a collection of just the young people that I have met over the years and schools and classrooms and libraries. And then of course, my own daughter, um, my friend's children, right? And just being young and precocious and inquisitive and excited about the world and life and what is happening all around them. Um, one of the reasons that uh, I wrote this series is because media literacy is so important. And so what I wanted Frankie to demonstrate to these young inquisitive news hounds, right? It's like, if, we're, if you're gonna be reporting on everything that is happening in your house and in the neighborhood <laughs> and telling your family's business, <laughs> let's be responsible, right? Um, the statistics are staggering. The number of children who can't distinguish between, you know, advertising and let's say, uh, what is an actual news story? Um, the number of children who can't distinguish between, you know, fact and fiction, right? And so, and we, they hear these buzzwords thrown around all the time. Like, of course they hear all oh, that fake news. But do they understand what that means? Do they understand what they need to do to not contribute to fake news? Do they understand how harmful fake news can be? And can they take joy in learning the difference between a fact and an opinion, right? Asking an open-ended question and a closed-ended question. And so, yeah, I mean, Frankie is a collection of all of the wonderful children uh, who I have had the pleasure of meeting over the years and just weaving all of their characteristics and, and funny moments in, into, this, into this wonderful story. So really excited. It's so exciting. And I think it is so unique and so important as you were just saying and talking about media literacy. It's critical that our youngest readers have access to books that invite them to think about the role of journalism, uh, of journalists and of the news. And, um, you know, as I read this, I couldn't help but think about the ways journalism in the past few years in particular has been uh, under attack for pursuing and reporting the truth at times, mm -hmm. but also has been called out for methods that are, or seem, I should say, irresponsible. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do hope that young readers will not only enjoy this delightful story, but will, will understand, uh, and I know they will, um, about the role of journalists and, and the purpose of the news, because you do such an excellent job breaking oh, it down, the vocabulary. It's all just so easy to just really um, take in. So we talked a little bit about what we hope children will do um, um, as readers of Frankie and Friends Breaking News. What are you hoping children will do as writers? Because I feel like there's an impact yeah. there as well. It is, it, there really is. You know, what I want, um, you know, run, young readers to take away and uh, as they think through their own contributions to journalism is that, you know, I want them to know that they are members of the citizen press. We all are, right? And so I want this to be an invitation to them to maybe they'll start their own newspapers, right? Maybe they'll start their own family, um, you know, a weekly announcement, a report, right? I really want them to enjoy uh, what journalism has always been, which is storytelling, truth telling at mm -hmm. its highest level, right? It is um, a profession that I have such high respect for. Um, and so really wanted to do it justice uh, by introducing a lot of these concepts early on to young readers. Um, you and I have both, you know, had the pleasure of working with so many educators over the years. And what we know is so important is that educators 
are allowed to build upon this knowledge over time, right? And so if you're getting these concepts when you're young, Mm -hmm. your, your fifth grade teacher is not having to talk to you about a fact and an opinion. You are very much aware of what a fact and opinion are. You have had an opportunity to use it in in conversation or, you know, if if you do write your own family newsletter or, you know, work for the school paper, right? And so this is also um, a gift, I I hope, for, for parents and educators, this understanding that we are building upon this knowledge over time, right? And so the more of these young readers are able to not only speak about these concepts, but actually apply them um, in real life, you know, that, that is, that is my hope uh, for the series. So I I love that you mentioned that. Thank you so much. I I just think it's such a a wonderful and unique opportunity for educators. I love that you write in the, in the book that Frankie's mother tells her to be on the lookout for developing stories (laughs) at home, that the news is happening all around us all the time. And I think that's such an exciting opportunity for young children to see themselves and their environment as rich and worthy of stories that, that matter in the world. And you mentioned fifth grade. I used to be a fifth grade teacher and uh, my colleague did this wonderful thing with uh, my daughter who was in her class at the time. She had these news shows. The kids would grab the newspaper and they would um, look for stories and then they would produce a news show every Friday. I love it. (laughs) What I was thinking as I was reading Frankie and Friends is, you know, second graders putting on a news show based on the stories in their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know how how much a second grader is able to actually digest a newspaper. Right. Like, yeah, times of the Washington Post. But but this idea that, no, your environment, your Mm -hmm. your where you live is is worthy of, of of the time to develop a story and to share that story, I think is really powerful for kids. Thank you so much. And, you know, I I love um this idea of again kids seeing themselves as citizen you know they're citizen press right and when when you just started talking earlier I know you saw my face kind of light up and I was laughing and it's because I'm already receiving pictures and messages uh from parents and educators those who have had a chance to do some of the early reads and I received a dm the other day of this this little girl and she has binoculars and she is just like looking out the window her mom (laughs) sent me the picture and she said literally our neighbors are outside talking and she is trying to you know (laughs) (laughs) um and so yeah I want children to understand that what is happening all around them is newsworthy and it's why in the Frankie series you know yes there are going to be stories you know tough topic, right? Um, Because the news does cover tough topics and getting kids to understand the difference between a hard news story and, you know, uh, and getting them to understand the challenges around that. And so there's a book uh, in this series called The Big Protest, Mm -hmm. right? And Frankie gets an opportunity to really share what a lot of young readers, uh, uh, young children experience when they hear about a quote, what is happening? what does this mean? You know, um, and able to have really funny conversations with her, uh, with her friends, her toys, right. You know, she goes back to the room to discuss it with them. You know, it's like, one is like, what's a protest, you know, and there's always a know-it-all toy. It's like, I mean, obviously it's a test for pros, (laughs) you know, like, but getting them to understand these concepts. So, having them report on, you know, sharing what it's like to report on tough things, but also things that are age appropriate and kid appropriate, right? I mean, another book in the series is, you know, the case of the missing socks. Where where are the socks going? Right. This is a developing story. Right, right. (laughs) I need you to go undercover and figure out, is it the washer or the dryer? Who's eating these socks, you know? So like also reporting on, you know, you know the loose tooth 
you know, like all mm-hmm. these fun things that are also very newsworthy to children. And so I, I hope by through doing that, it is an invitation for young readers to see the news that is happening in their own lives and, 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 and get excited about reporting on it and sharing that. And I love that Black children get to see themselves in this way because it's not, you know, it, it's not uh, it's not something that they get to experience often, right? Mm-hmm. Particularly with stories for younger readers. It's not yes. often that we see Black children at the center losing socks yes. and just, you know, just living their lives, right? And yes, mm-hmm. also maybe thinking about protests, right? But mm-hmm. doing kid things right um yes that are joyous and funny and silly and sweet um and so I just am so happy that kids will be able to see themselves in this way and I have to give a shout out to Aaliyah Marley am I saying that name correctly yeah illustrations because the sweetness I know comes through when she so sweet, I remember so seeing sweet. the illustrations, and I was like, "Oh, oh. I love Frankie!" So I sweet, just the Afro love. love. <laughs> I mean, and come like, through. We, I want. This is a black child, <laughs> right? I want the flyaways. I want the whole nine. The baby um, hairs. The baby. <laughs> nine and you know I think too there are so many beautiful illustrations of Frankie and her family of her and her sister right like really honoring that and really saying like you know it's also important to show varying skin tones you know not everyone in the black family is the same you know and so it's also an opportunity for children for black children again for this book to really be a mirror for them. And yeah, Aaliyah did such a beautiful job. So you talked about the series. When can readers yes. look for book two? Um, and are there any other projects that uh, we can look forward to? So uh, yes, you can look for book two, The Big Protest, uh, in early 2024. Um, I think we're trying to have one book come out uh, each season. So that's really mm-hmm. exciting. Um, and then uh, I think the next step is the loose tooth, which is really funny and super cute. <laughs> and then uh, the last book in the series uh, is at least this first set is uh, the missing sock case of the missing sock. Yeah. And I won't I won't ruin that for you to let you know what we <laughs> discover. Um, and yeah, I'm working on a, another uh, children's book. It's a standalone book. Uh, with Candlewick called Change Starts With Me and mm-hmm. really getting children to understand uh, what it means to be an ally, right? What it means to be an activist in all areas of their lives. So we explore it in the classroom, we explore it in the environment, we, you know, and it's, um, I'm really excited about that. And then uh, in this December, uh, I have a novel that I co-authored with my dear friend, Catherine Wigington Green, who is also an anti-biased, anti-racist educator. And uh, that book is called Rebecca, Not Becky. And we're super excited uh, because it is an opportunity, again, for us to talk about the importance of engaging in difficult dialogue, allowing um, parents, uh, and in particular mothers, uh, to see themselves in in their fullness and the role that they you know take on as as being not only um, you know the, the the folks who their kids look up to and rely on you know for meals and just life essentials, but also on how to navigate the world. Um, and we do that through again with a little humor and grace. Um, and so really excited about that book as well. And uh, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm busy and I'm in my season oh. and I'm super excited. I, I yeah. feel like I've been excited a hundred times um, on this podcast, but yes. <laughs> that is because I am. 
And I'm excited. And yes, you are busy and booked. And I'm hoping that you will come back to the Black oh Panther series Anytime. with so many amazing books coming out to, for us to talk about. Anytime, yeah. anytime. Well, Christine, you are someone who shows up with great intention in all that you do as an author and advocate whose work really lives at the center of social, racial, and environmental justice. You help Black people see themselves with clarity, with power, and with love. What mm. does it mean to you to be a Black creator? First of all, thank you so much for saying that. That makes me uh, <laughs> a little emotional, you know, and I, I, I'm I, sure you understand being in this space, how difficult it, it can be, you know, to just stay true to yourself and your community and your work and what you've been, you know, what, what I feel like I've been called to do. And so thank you for acknowledging me in that way and seeing me in that way. It, it really does mean um, a lot to me. Um, to be a Black creator, you know, it's interesting. I think the definition of, of, of being a creator is to bring something new or original into being, right? Um, and so I think for me as a, as a Black creator, uh, you know, I, I, I have this privilege and, and this honor of doing that for our people, right? And it is a responsibility that I take very seriously. Um, and I do, I feel like it's a calling to do that through storytelling. And, um, and, and again, just a privilege, right, to be among those of us uh, who, who are able to tell our stories and create content for our people in this way. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's what it means to me. You know, it is, it is truly a gift and an honor to be a Black creator, to share our stories, to have them celebrated, um, the lesser known stories, um, those that our uh, folks are familiar with, who were able to tell it through a different angle, and then also being able to, again, create something new and original that will hopefully inspire the next generation. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. You. Oh, thank you. This was wonderful. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Black Creators Series, a Candlewick Press and Red Clay Educators collaboration. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notifications button so you won't miss an episode. For more information about the Black Creators Series, go to blackcreatorsseries.candlewick.com or soniacherrypaul.com or go to redclayed on Twitter and Instagram.